and today is uh, November, November 13th, okay. 2014. All I, know, all, I, all I know is Monday. It's my birthday. Count back from 17. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was easy. Monday's the 17th. Um, when I met you in 2010, I was uh, attempting unsuccessfully to recruit you for my dissertation. And uh, something changed. You didn't do my dissertation, but something changed your mind along the way where you decided you wanted to use neurofeedback for post traumatic stress disorder symptom reduction. Yeah, I saw, saw uh, Andy. He was a changed man. In what way? He wasn't angry all the time. And he didn't lose his temper immediately all the time. What was of interest to you? And he had a sense of humor. I never knew he had a sense of humor because he was angry all the time. He was a fairly funny guy. And so for yourself, what was it that caused you to come and confront me about what did you do to that guy? (laughs) Well, because I knew what, but I could tell what he was going through before because I was going through it too. And like, when, he, when, when he stopped doing it, I went, that's possible. Which particular aspects of your behavior were bothersome to you? Uh, post-traumatic stress disorder where I had the incident in my youth and I'm still suffering from it 30 years later because I had the dream about it every month of my life. I would use a telephone and have that dream three nights in a row. And wake up, it would wake me up. Three nights in a row, it's really hard to get stuff done in your life. Mm. <laughs> what did? What was the first thing you noticed as changing in your life from using neurofeedback? And I know that was some years ago, but what in re- retroflect do you recall now? Well, it was, it was subtle and profound. In what ways? Um, the, the anger falls away. It doesn't just stop. It, it falls away. You find you, you. You remember that day in the kitchen where Monica, you seem upset <laughs> because that was like the first time in a long time where somebody got upset around me and I didn't get upset. Also, <laughs> you know what I mean? I didn't. Okay, you're angry. I get that, but it doesn't mean I'm angry. I'm in my own little place and my own secure in my own little self, quietly confident. <laughs> quietly. Confident. That's what you said after the Alpha Theta training. Quietly confident. I feel like I've got some momentum. Now, you didn't have a total reduction in alcohol use, but you did have reduction in alcohol use. Can you describe what that is like or has been like in your life? Well, it's it's a lot more money. Because I was, at one point, I was drinking a case a day. And now? And now a 12 pack will last me three days. I'll generally fall asleep if I try and drink the whole thing. Hmm. All <laughs> I'll right. never make it. <laughs> um, how did the neurofeedback impact your um, communication skills with others? Well, now I have some. <laughs> Let's move on to the subject of, of autism. <laughs> What did you discover about Asperger's and uh, your own life? Well, you, you, you know, I didn't know I had it. <laughs> I, I read the description and went, yeah, that's me. But uh, I didn't, I'd never read the description. I didn't know. Nobody ever said. I remember that uh, twice in school, they came to my mother and asked her to bump me ahead of grade and she wouldn't do it. And what are your special interests? My special interests would be music, music, and music. <laughs> and your language skills are really good. <laughs> yeah, maybe I can write some good lyrics. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> That'd be okay. Um, you also have a really um, amazing mind for details. Jeopardy, you're a fan of Jeopardy. I, I remember being in a bar once, and because uh, the, the satellite would break up in the weather, signal would break up in the weather, Bar the local bar had cable that mm-hmm. isn't affected by the weather, so I'll go watch Jeopardy over there. Mm-hmm. And uh, the the first board ran, they called out the categories, I'm watching intently. 
first question, second question, first question, blah, 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 blah. And these two guys at the end go, I think he just ran that entire board. I said, you're damn right. And we, <laughs> Jeopardy. I answered every question in the first round before anybody else. And I had all the right answers, every single one of them. Okay, and now you like Scrabble, too. Uh, so I am the terror of the internet. You like Scrabble. So, music, language skills. He's currently skills. a new guy playing. He's playing uh, three games with me, and he's losing all three of them. <laughs> you having fun with that? I, I, until they lose heart. <laughs> Eventually they lose heart. I quit playing me. So, when we finished up 20 sessions of neurofeedback, you had made some changes in your life regarding PTSD in what way? Well, I don't have it anymore. <laughs> I like that a lot. I don't have it anymore. I, I, I want to scream that to the rooftops if you are suffering from a memory that bothers you over and over again, come see Miss Monica. <laughs> Just well, wait you for much. a little magic wand and it'll all go away. It'll take a couple of weeks, but it will all go away. This is funny. Okay. And it never reared its face again. Okay, now what we started working on, I thought was going to be the uh, autism spectrum. And instead, when we started up the next 20 sessions using the HDILF, the uh, cutting edge breakthrough, we started looking at music. what? Music. Music. What kind of impact have you noticed uh, about neurofeedback's effect on your music skills, grasp, performance, any of those things? Let me see. Because... Uh... I've had a couple of, of musical epiphanies. Little things where I saw, saw a pattern I didn't see before. And uh, I, I'm better able to take a song apart and put it back together and, and play the thing. I feel, like, I feel like if I give it enough time, I can take any song apart and play it. Not just identically to the way you first heard it. Oh, certainly not. What are you doing now that's different from the way you were playing when I first met you? Well, I'm putting my own stamp on it. Uh -huh. I, I take it apart, put it back together again my way. I, you know, I, I, I don't, there's no hard and fast, this is how the song goes, it's in this key, and you will sing it like this. First of all, a lot of them are written by tenors or girls, and I can't sing them like that, so I have to put them in a key I can sing them in. And stylistically, and I, I took the Randy Van Warmer song and reworked it completely. <laughs> I'm sure I can make the bomb man burst into a chorus of, uh, look what they done to my song, Ma. <laughs> it's way different. My version is way different. It's good. It's different. There are two really big changes I've noticed in your behavior, uh, three. One is your ability to interact with other musicians. That's... When you first came to town, you just played and you didn't care who else was playing at the open mics. You just played and you sometimes stepped on other people's songs. How did your musical behavior toward other people change? Well, I'm better able to, to determine when to play and when not to. And you're also hosting an open mic now. I'm hosting the open mic and I, I got that job. I got that job because I was simply nicer than the guy who had it. All right. <laughs> he he was like a, a substitute teacher. He's playing. You. No clapping. <laughs> okay. No harmony. Don't pick. Don't even think about picking up a tambourine. It's his turn. <laughs> okay. And. Me, I want you to pick up the term, the tambourine. I want you to hand clap. I want the oohs and ahs and the background vocals. And I want you to put a lead line when I leave a break for it. Go, go, come on, join us. So you're act We're you've building something. You've turned it into a more of a jam than a simple one person open mic. That's exactly what I did. Very nice. And and when we removed the electronics, because we were bringing in a PA system down there, and they, after, you know, turn it down, turn it down, turn it down, okay, I'm, I'm bringing 80 pounds of equipment for a touch of reverb. Because you, once we turn it down and turn it down and turn it down, you, it, it wasn't any louder than it was without it. So why have it? Simplified. Simplified. And it's much more personal, personable, and intimate. Let's get to the next because concept we, then. Because we look right face to face and play the music, you know, so, sit in a circle. 
So let's look at the next concept of eye contact. What's happened with your eye contact? <laughs> Boy, has that gotten better. <laughs> and how about recognition of social cues? I'm still working on that. Some of them I get, some of them I don't. Uh, You're seeing them now. Jerry Seinfeld said that sometimes the person he's talking to will use an expression, and he's so literal he doesn't understand them. The idiom. Idiom, exactly. The inference. Uh, like a, a lot of British ones, I'm sure will confuse him. So you're talking cultural stuff. Exactly. Um, let's say, for instance, that he heard somebody say that Mary on her way home got a slap and tickle. And a slap and tickle is raped in Britain. Oh. But in America, unless you know that, then you're going to wonder what the hell they meant. And that would, you know, that kind of phrase would confuse. I've been to Britain, so that would confuse me. But that one, it's just tip of the iceberg. There's all kinds of, all kinds of expressions. That... I think normal communicators would also have those multicultural problems. Okay, here's the next biggest thing I've noticed about you. Your stories are no longer very angry stories. I, angry stories. You madman. I don't want to talk about the angry stories. <laughs> well, you used to do it all the time. <laughs> I know, because I would relive them. I was in them. I couldn't even have a conversation with you that lasted 60 seconds without you looping into some sad, angry, betrayed Looping story. is exactly the word. And now what happens? I, I, we broke the loop. I don't go back into that loop. Where I still you? have those memories, but they aren't forced on me. How great is that? It's liberating. I, it's liberating. I felt like I just got a pardon from the governor for my life sentence. That's what it's like. So, um, what would you like to tell other people about the use of neurofeedback for PTSD, for addressing comorbid, comorbid aut aut <laughs> easy well, for me to say, autism. <laughs> if you're suffering from PTSD and you don't do this, then you must want to suffer from PTSD. Because here's the cure. It's a cure, not a treatment. It's, you know, I might, I, I, I will enjoy hooking up to those leads and doing more music stuff, but a lot of my problems are in the past and they're gone and they're dead, dead and buried and I'm just sleeping there and light a candle and move on. And with regard, and I'm ready to move on. I'm finally ready to move on. I don't. I'm not constantly going back to square one. You Looping. Get, yeah, yeah, no more you, loops. You'd, you'd be on some thought process, and suddenly, bam! You're back at seven. You're seven years old again. It's really hard to get stuff done. And uh, with regard to the developmental order, disorder, interesting order, of autism. What do you have to say about that? Well, I, you know, it's it was it was very strange to live for what fifty years before somebody told me, and uh, <laughs> it when when I when I started looking back because I only look back I only reflect back over my life around my birthday. It's the only time. The rest of the time I'm working on today and life now. Yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, the, the reflection now is different. I, I think about what the things I choose to think about, not the things that somebody, you know, Shel Silverstein untied my head and shoved the nasty tops in and tied the bow back on. That didn't happen anymore. And it really felt like that. It really felt like somebody opened my brain up, shoved a pile of crap in it, and slapped it back down and said, now think, boy. You know? That's before you had the neurofeedback. That's feedback. before. And now, that never happens. It never happens. A forced memory of previous trauma just does not occur. With a word or a phrase, how would you summarize your overall experience with oh, neurofeedback? One word? <laughs> Liberating. Okay. <laughs> that would be the word. Is there anything else you'd like to say, tell, ask, or suggest before I cut off this video for other people who may be watching this on YouTube? What I got was peace. I'm, I'm a level of tranquility I didn't know was possible.
<laughs> I'm enjoying it. Oh, that's marvelous. Let's see, we still have activity happening here. <laughs> 